I think right now we're trying to struggle to come back from the two steps back. Uh, you have challenges which are resulting in a huge problem in terms of the power build out that we all know about, issues to do with land acquisition, coal linkages, environmental clearances. Uh, if you just look at the sheer number of projects that have been given licenses and what stage they've reached, it's abysmal performance. You have a lot of gas fired power plants, for example, where the power plants are out, pipelines are built to connect them uh, with gas supplies, but there's no gas. So you have idling capacity on the gas side as well. So almost everywhere you look, uh, our ability for time to market uh, for a particular project is way behind the rest of the world standards. It's easier today, for example, I was in Sri Lanka last week, to put up a power plant in Sri Lanka and probably put an undersea cable into to India because your coal is coming from either Africa, from uh, Indonesia, Australia, South Africa, Mozambique. So in any case, you're right there and Sri Lanka is just, you know, a stone's throw away from the southern tip. And simply clearances will be that much faster. So we find that there's too many agencies that are involved, whether it's on the highway side, whether it's on the power side, whether it's on the port side, whether it's on you want to build a shipyard. It is just too, too time consuming. And every day you find that there's some new change in regulation, there's no real uh, transparency about exactly what you need to do, where you need to do. Barring some states which have taken the, uh, the ownership of really building out infrastructure, we all know which ones they are, uh, which are different from the rest of the country. But overall, we have gone two steps back, if not three. Over the last two years, you've all spoken about uh, policy uh, paralysis and infrastructure not really getting the leg up it needed. A lot of infrastructure companies, including yours, have faced the flack for it. Uh, this year, with all the noise and the hope of progress, has there been change on the ground? See, awarding contracts is not solving the problem. Okay, and I think they tend to, uh, people tend to see that the number of contracts or the kilometers on highways, as an example, is showing that there's a major movement in the sector. The point is, are you really geared up as a nation that says that all agencies are now committed to this happening? Are you able to deliver the right of way on time? Are you willing to take the politically unfamiliar st or unpopular uh, uh, step, okay, of dealing with local issues, whether it's moving a small temple or a small mosque or moving some other place which is significant to the locals? Are you willing to reroute your line around uh, the, the highway around those, uh, those obstacles? Are your tree cutting permissions coming from the right uh, agencies at the right time? The disputes that arise and all contracts globally right, have a difference of opinion between the owner and the contractor and the engineer. Now, everywhere else in the world, they have sorted out the dispute resolution in a seamless manner that within three to six months after your project is done, you have come to a conclusion. In India, it's a minimum five to five to seven year wait. But this has always been a problem. Right. Has it been exaggerated because of other issues over the it last It has been two exaggerated years because the sheer number of projects that have been floated out have resulted in that many more litigation, which means the system which is already constrained to resolve these disputes is hugely overburdened, right? The BK Chaturvedi report has been on the table. Everybody knows what needs to be done. But everything seems to be done in little bits and pieces. It's not taken up in a holistic manner that, okay, what are the issues dealing with that are affecting this sector? How do we resolve them? And make sure that everybody is aligned and we end up saying that we want to build a great nation okay, that reflects the, the great nation that we are. That's not happening. Let's break it down to verticals because, you know, building India is about the multiple verticals that go into it. Let's talk about power, for instance. You have a big exposure. You build some of the big power plants in the country. Right. We've seen a situation where pretty much a lot of it is at the risk of being mothballed because of few linkages. And while we've seen the government try and act, we've not seen anything on the ground. What's your assessment? Well, I mean, you've pretty much said what the problem is, that, you know, you've got a country which is sitting on one of the largest coal reserves in the world. Arguably, they may have a high ash content, they may not be the best coal in the world, but you can talk about blending them, you can talk about various other solutions to resolving the problem. But yet, okay, we are, as we were seeing, the deficit is just increasing by leaps and bounds. So, it's the, the linkages, it's the clearances, it's now the financing, because a lot of the projects are now being questioned in terms of their financial viability, right? So, it's just everything is just, it's not, just not coming together the way it should. The first flurry of projects happened, but now suddenly you're seeing banks are getting wary, all right, of financing any infrastructure project. Okay, so the sector suddenly from being the, uh, the golden boy on the block to being, oh, oh let's just wait and watch uh, what happens here before we take any more exposure. So all around there seems to be uh, a lot of confusion uh, or a lack of direction about what is happening. Policy paralysis, I don't think, has affected the sector as much as the confusion around what all do you need to have in place to make it successful. 
as I said, awarding contracts is simply not, or giving a license, is not resolving the problem. At best, you may be passing the problem from your own door to somebody else who's agreed to do it for a particular price. But if the environment does not allow him to do that at, effectively at that price, your problem is not being solved.